Hello everybody and welcome in to the 92nd episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast. Tis I, Colton Robertson, and I am again joined by the lovely Emily Rose Thompson. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. We are here to discuss the fourth episode of DC's Harley Quinn, Finding Mr. Right. Finding Mr. Perfectly Right. Perfectly fine. You're perfectly even. fine. Taylor good song. Swift. It's a good song. I love her so much. I know Queen. you do, baby. Queenie, I know Queenie you do. Pop. But you know the you know the deal. If you've listened to the last three, you know we uh, we turn the episode on, we press play, and we do a live commentary of it. Live. We'll do a nice no little. No pauses. Uh, we'll do a nice little uh, countdown for you. Uh, if you want to watch along with us, go to HBO Max. Queue up the fourth episode. Finding Mr. Right. Do it. Of DC's Harley Quinn. Do it now. Uh, and if you don't want to, that's just fine. Our conversation fine. should be encompassing enough for you to, you know, kind of get enough out of it. Yeah. We'll try to, like, keep you keep you Updated posted, too, bit. you know? Yeah, where we're at. But uh, You've heard this before, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. If you haven't, go, go listen. But uh, we're also, after the episode, going to talk about uh, what we've what we've watched throughout 2021 Oh yeah. Uh, release it, as far as uh, releases go in 2021, and then we'll we'll mix in some of just what we've generally been watching. It's yes, been a sir. it's been a lot of TV watching. Though. Yes, a lot of it. We've had a lot of downtime. Downtime. Well, well not we work really. A lot. We, we work, work a, lot. a lot, and then we get off and watch a lot of TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're we're just cogs in the. Uh... We're just. Did you say cocks? <laughs> Horrible bosses. I didn't say too. anything. I was making a horrible boss. <gasps> I reference. love that movie. Another we watched that we movie watched this it. week too because I love it. Dude, so both much. those movies are fantastic. However, Horrible Bosses Two is obviously tier over Horrible Bosses Rex! One. Rex, Rex, Rex. <laughs> what were you gonna do if he was here, <laughs> dude? <laughs> roll the tape. Hey, him. hey, come on, roll the tape. Sorry, I was getting lost in, but uh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna roll the tape. Then we're gonna we're gonna do a live Five commentary. Blah, blah, blah. Got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bombast. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcast. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. So, we have got DC's Harley Quinn queued up, ready Episode to go. Episode 4. Episode 4. We're going to do the countdown. Say 3, 2, 1, punch it, and on punch it, you press play, and we'll be off. We'll be talking the episode as it happens. Watching it together. Watching it together. It's like one We're one, one big, big happy big family. Friend group. <laughs> friend group. <laughs> go ahead and press play. All right. So, 3, 2, 1, punch it. Punched. DC Universe Originals. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking dork. <laughs> we got Batman throwing his blade. We got Superman. We got Wonder Woman. We got that fish guy. We got fish Cyborg, guy. Flash, Green Lantern. I love that you knew Cyborg, but you didn't know Fish Guy. <laughs> Aqua, Aqua Dude. Uh, Jason Momosa. Jason Momoa. I'm hi. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ivy. I love her. Queen, She's a queen. Queenie Pop. They just robbed a bank. They, they're they're a talented little supervillain team, you know. This is them. This is their showcase. They're like, look at us. We just robbed a bank. But I love We're the point of this episode. Group. I love the point of this episode. You know, it's like, who gives a shit about a supervillain team if there's not a superhero trying to stop? Them? Yeah, like who are they fighting then? Like, yeah, they're exactly. just causing like, chaos. Well, and that's like their goal, you know. Like as long as they can get away with shit, that's cool. But they also want to get the recognition for it. Exactly. They want to. They want news. They stories. Want, they want. They want to be. They want to be renowned. She's she, like Harley Quinn. This whole series. She's been about 
getting that bigger name than the Joker. Exactly. And then she goes to check the fucking news. And who are they Who are they covering? Joker None but the, the Joker. God, I hate him. He's it's, the worst. I love Clayface's, like, you know, it's it's not just a crime. It's, it becomes a battle between titans whenever it's Joker versus Batman. So Harley needs her nemesis. Harley needs a nemesis. So Harley's got to find her Mr. Right. And it's so it's so funny how Batman and Joker just keep doing keep doing that. They just keep fighting. They're always fighting. It's a lovers quarrel. They'll don't never you know? stop. Till death do them part. You know. Oh my as... gosh, how embarrassing for them grown ass men. Just grown fighting ass, in Gotham grown City. Ass men. <laughs> I love I love Ivy's cup. Yes. <laughs> Go green. Humans make great fertilizer. She's got uh, some... Ivy. Ivy's a, Ivy's a bad bitch. Oh, Clayface! Look at him making little the little, the little stories a, with a his thrilling hand. narrative between two titans. Clayface is objectively he's a story really teller. cool, bro. He is a storyteller. I'm glad DC brought Clayface to life. I yeah, love and, that. And it's it, the only way you can do it satisfyingly is in animation. Yeah, you, know? you can't make a live weird. action good looking Clayface. I don't want to see that. It'll be and it, he wouldn't be as he would like none of these characters are generally as endearing as or they are shark, in the show. Uh, King Shark. Name? King Shark. Just... I'm excited to see. And now that you've watched this, you're definitely going to want to see the the Suicide Squad movie coming out this year. Is he going to be in it? King Shark. No. Harley Quinn. No. Yeah. It's going to be great. You're lying. No, nah, seriously. Okay, what about this guy? Is he going to be in it? The guy in the wheelchair <laughs> with the robot arm? Introduced to Cy Borgman here. Such a senile old, old man. Who is Cy- he? Like Cy Borgman. Ivy's, Ivy's His name grandpa? Is Cy Borgman. Cyborg man. Loser. What a, what a guy. <laughs> what a guy. There are uh, There's a lot of complaints and uh, controversy surrounding this show in some regards and the portrayal of Cy Borgman. Why? Because he is, he brings to life a lot of negative, or not negative, but brings to life a lot of Jewish stereotypes. Really? Yeah, so the show has been accused of being anti-Semitic before. Huh, I can see that actually. They do, they, they. they, I I kind of made some faces during some of the jokes they made. Yeah, and you know. I was like, uh. And and Harley, she is like they they make it a point in this character that she's a proud, or not a proud, but a Jewish Jewish woman. Yeah, you know? and it's like it's a background thing. You know, they only they only kind of mention it once, and it's when they meet her mother. So yeah. it's kind of like why haven't? But there's also the perspective that every writer except one on the staff of the show is Jewish. So it's like. Their perspective and the way they've written these jokes off is that it's self depreciating, you know. Okay, so they don't see it as offensive. Oh, they're, they're, they 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 say they're coming at themselves in general. Yeah, yeah. But it, regardless, it can still be damaging. Exactly. You like know? you're still putting bad thoughts into other. And see, that's the thing, heads. though, is that like. I I hadn't noticed the anti-Semitism until it was pointed out to me. So yeah, it makes whenever me you question, just pointed it out to me, I was like, oh, it yeah. It makes me okay. question, like, because when I watched this, it's not like I thought about it and went, gosh, that makes me think that the Jews are bad. It's you been know? desensitized, sorry, for sorry. sure. It's like, don't sound, don't sound clip that. But, like, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's. People who do anti-Semitism Semitism jokes don't realize the weight of it, you know. Yeah, it's a gen- it's a, it's a it's a very big problem. But let's get back to the episode. Yeah, a bit. Harley Sorry, is a, a straight turn. up running away from the cops right now. Uh, she she stole Batman's Batmobile. You know, she's trying to get that nemesis. That nemesis. She's trying to get the nemesis. The clutch nemesis. Joker's nemesis. Yeah, if she ha- she, if she gets Batman as her nemesis. She's set. And frankly, this is one of the cooler scenes in a lot of DC stuff, where Harley Quinn has successfully somehow stolen the Batmobile. Harley is fucking amazing at everything she does, in my opinion. Yeah, but she is. She just gets caught sometimes, and people are quick to say it's because she's a woman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Joker wouldn't get caught. He's a man. Well, and that's what's funny is that there's the. 
<laughs> there's this cult, this bro culture and superhero fandom, you know, that's For sure. very, very misogynistic <laughs> in general. So them seeing a character and they even make fun of those guys at some point in the season. Remember that like all Batman episode yep. in season two mm-hmm. where the dudes are like, Ugh, why would they have a show in Gotham yeah. that doesn't even have Batman in I it? I don't really? even want to watch if it's just all about a woman. I saw people online like being like they're pushing a, a lesbian agenda. Like, dude, it's just you're just homophobic. Yeah. <laughs> you can't stand to see a woman on the screen. You're a homophobe. <laughs> That's the bottom line. But like. <laughs> so they can't stand to see those misogynists can't stand to see a woman on screen who is good at everything and who defeats the big bads. You know, like she takes down all of these guys. Yep. You know, because this is her show. Mm-hmm. That's the point of her show. And it's fun that way because she's the main character. But Harley Quinn would never do that. Bro, it's a fucking comedy. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth a little bit. It's just It's just misogyny. That's all it is. That's all that's all I'm gonna comment. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting really deep into this episode. But it, 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 they they com- they have a lot of commentary on them. Like true, they, 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 they go and plenty. they really go into deep stuff into this show. In this show, I mean, I think it's funny that uh, Robin has claimed Harley as his nemesis. Yeah, he needs one. You know, fourteen year old boy. He's getting older. He needs a nemesis, and he's chosen Harley. He's chosen Harley, and yeah. Harley's like, "What the fuck? No." She, she has. She later comes up with the plan. You know, she should kill. Robin. And they're like, no. Harley, you can't do that. He's a kid. And I don't think Harley ever would have. But, you know, she is the kind to have the idea. Yeah. To kill, She's like, kill ah, a child. Hey, why don't I just kill him? But she wouldn't. I don't think she would. I don't think she would. She seems to have a moral compass in general. Uh, only if, like, Joker told her to. Back in the day. Back in the day. Maybe. Puddin'. Puddin'. Want me to kill this kid for you? <laughs> Oh man! Now, now Harley's saying she wants to kidnap her. Yep, Lois, Lois Lane. Lane. Sorry, guys, I didn't specify. Yeah, she, she wants to kidnap. She Lois wants Lane. to kidnap Lois Lane because she wants is, to make Superman her nemesis. She's so focused on the end, <laughs> on this goal of getting a nemesis that she doesn't think about like how could she possibly <laughs> fend off Superman? What's her idea here? <laughs> And know, we watched, this is one we'll be talking about later, Superman and Lois on the CW. Oh my gosh, so, you've, so good. So you've become a little bit more familiar with Superman as a character. In my opinion, one of the best, the best version of Superman. I, I love it. And they have a really funny play on that guy in this. And Superman being a dad joke fucking dork, you know? Oh yeah. Where he's like, that's just how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> I love this, is, this scene. Dude, he's he's just so casual. He doesn't give because, a fuck, bro. No, because they be they fuck with way bigger shit than Harley <laughs> Quinn. And then here's Robin. <laughs> and I love how serious he takes it, like his verbiage and stuff. Yeah. You were ill advised. <laughs> you are ill advised. He's just a fucking goofy ass kid. And I love that when he gets nervous he gets nosebleeds. Because that's such a that's such a kid thing to do, but it, 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 it nearly bites him in the ass later. Yeah. No rip. Pun intended. Rip a Rooney. Oh, my goodness. He's telling Superman to go fuck off. <laughs> Superman, you goody fucking two-shoes. He's like, you dude, know- there's like a cat in a tree. He's like, bro, you know nothing of the dark. <laughs> my my mentor is the darkest man alive. So Batman. Get the fuck out of my face, Soup. Dude's riding a hoverboard. Run away! Fear me! <laughs> I love that he just sounds like a straight up baby, you know. He's a bitch boy. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he just sounds like a straight up child. Oh, Harley and Ivy hugging. Dude, yeah, uh, <laughs> that that line from Harley there, where she thinks that Ivy is pregnant, and she says, "This is going to be so bad for your career, but so good for your Instagram." <laughs> I get, it's weird. I'm like 21. And, like, I have friends who are, like, straight up posting pictures of their children. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Huh? (laughs) What are you going to (laughs) do? What? 
Yeah, we're not in high school. It's a weird. Children? It's a weird thing. But um, uh, here, Harley is not pregnant. <laughs> she'll make him wish he'd, he'd never, never been, been born. born. <laughs> Kimmy Schmidt. Another one we've been Another watching. Another one we've been watching. Uh, we, watch we have watched so things. much TV. <laughs> <laughs> And then we come back and rewatch this every now and then, too. Yeah, every week we got to get one out of the way because this shit's too fun, it frankly. Is. It's too good. I can't believe more people don't watch it. All right. This is their plan to scare Robin. And, you know, saying not enough people watch it, I love that it's on HBO Max now. And it's H- it's an HBO Max original because the adult cartoon is like, a, a thing that people want a lot more these days, you know, like Bojack Horseman and Rick and Morty and shit like that, and like, like all anime, all uh, anime, f- uh, fucking, and it goes, it goes back to like Simpsons and Family Guy, yep. American Dad, mm-hmm. all that shit. But like that being an HBO Max original now, when season three comes out, I think it's going to be huge for DC because DC animation is just fucking phenomenal. It's Their movies so and everything, good. it's just, it's it's so just perfect, underrated. All right, we got um, Shark King scaring off King Robin. Shark. King just, Shark. <laughs> just King Shark doo 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 Swimming doo-doo. around in a tank right now. Yeah, he's trying to, he's he's threatening to eat Robin. And Robin's, Robin's like, why would I ever divulge to these fucking idiots that I, I lied? They're all morons. And everyone's like, yo, Robin's a little piece of shit. <laughs> Who He's knows? on the Tawny show, which is like what in our world? Um, Tyra. Tyra. Okay, I think it's yeah. a Tyra Banks thing. I think it's supposed to be. It's funny. They straight up hanging this 14-year-old boy upside down. And, and then he gets a nosebleed, which is bad for King Shark, who earlier said he's not so good with blood. And which, it's because it oh, makes, it makes him, him murdery. violent. Uh and I think it's funny that he put it as not being too good with blood. Yeah, why didn't he say, yeah, I feel murdery around blood. Like, I feel <laughs> like, like bro, it should have been bro, more sh- Well, it cautious. should also be common sense. You're dealing with a fucking shark. Yeah. You know, nobody that's true, should bleed but he's because. he's such a nice guy. I would have needed more of a warning. Is he going to be like a great option? Like, does does the blood have to hit water for him to get attracted to blood? No, or when I don't think fights? so. I think it. Well, that's, I don't see. Know. That's the thing because when he bites fights, off people's heads, I I don't know. But maybe that satisfies his yeah. bloodlust. You know, yeah. just just getting the bite. I couldn't tell you. I I don't know. He'll kill you all, is what he just said. Because he's 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 murder mode right now. <sighs> he's crazy right now. And it's it, it is cute as hell. Robin begging for Batman, dad, and then so. he switches to Dad. Yeah. I think that Batman and then he goes, Dad I would like a story of Batman and Robin that is well done in live action that is more of a father son <gasps> yes. thing. Because there has Get been a Batman more in depth. And, yeah, story. there has been like Batman and Robin, which we covered on the Penny Bloom podcast back back a while back for the Batman binge. You can go check that out. Batman it's called you The Batman Binge Begins. Uh we discussed nineteen ninety seven's Batman and Robin starring starring George Clooney and uh uh Oh shit! No. I cannot remember who played Robin. I don't know, but I'm choking. It sounds really good. It's not. It's hilarious. Oh, okay. I mean, it's all right. It's a classic. <laughs> it's like a. It's like a very cheesy, corny comic book movie. Okay, but that's what yeah. makes it a lot of fun. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, there's not like a real, real good Batman Robin story in live action. Let's make one. or animation. I'd love. I mean, there's there's probably animated movies with a lot better that I just haven't haven't. Not giving enough credit right now, but I'll be Batman, you'll be Robin. (laughs) Dad? (laughs) Son? No, I don't like that. And I love that, you know, Joker robbed the bank, but, and he was like, Where's Batman? And Batman's like, Uh, fighting off Harley. Harley. So Joker's masculinity is, uh, you know, threatened. Yep. He's, uh, and Rip Harley getting her ass beat by Batman. As per usual. Uh, every time she fights Batman, she ends up in Arkham. And here's Ivy. Yo, Ivy would fuck on anybody in in DC. Oh, I yeah. promise. She's like what Wanda is to the Marvel universe. The only person like she probably couldn't fuck with is like Dark Side. Gosh, she's amazing. I wish she'd uh, leave me up like that. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> She's like, my in- my existence is to clean up your fucking messes, Harley. And it's funny because earlier she was literally cleaning the apartment from her messes earlier. Yep. Oh my gosh, Kite Man just like vibing in the bar. We see that he, uh, she uh, declares herself an eco-terrorist, which I think is, it's a funny commentary on how she's not so much a villain as she used to be, you know? Like she yeah. used to be viewed as like an actual villain and now she's more of a anti-hero type. Yeah. You know? Honestly, all she is is just someone who wants better for the environment. So. Yeah, exactly. She's I mean, going to she be seen as a humans, villain. But, but because of Harley, she hates them less. Yeah. Like, okay, we don't understand that part. Did she just eat? Did Harley eat Batman's knife? Knife? Or did she... I think like, she hit she it. She obviously hit it down. But, like, it looked like she, like, knocked it down with, like, her It looks lips. like she swallowed it. Yeah, I don't know. She's like, I, was, oh. I was a little appalled. I don't know. <gasps> oh. Kissy, kissy scene. Kiss ya? I've hardly... I've, I've hardly even know ya. Get it? I love Ivy and Harley so much. I love the headlines on Tawny. They're always funny. Kiss ya? I've hardly even know ya. <laughs> How they even Harley, come up with that? what the fuck? <laughs> 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 it's just now getting Harley, heated. Tawny. what the fuck? She's like, are it's you my stealing Joker my impression. Batman? Nemesis love triangle? Bat jokely? And then <laughs> Superman, Superman and Lois. Casual. Just eating sushi. I like, uh... I like the idea that Lois, like, it's so obvious that Lois Lane is somehow connected to Superman. Like, she has to be. She gets way too, the same way Peter Parker gets way too good photos of Spider-Man, you know? It's yeah, like, everybody's like, if you fuck with Lois Lane, Superman will come. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, who's Lois Lane dating? Don't know. Oh. <laughs> is it Clark Kent? Yeah, everybody kind of knows. Nobody ever seen Clark Kent with his glasses off? But, okay, I'm not going to lie. In Superman and Lois, he does look like a different person. He really does. His glasses. It's, I'm, and I was and like, it's that phenomenon of, whoa. like, why would Superman be this dude I know? Yeah, you're right. You know? Like, he's just, a, he's just a dude that nobody even likes, really. Yeah, he's always considered kind of a fucking dork. Yeah, but the only person... Okay, we can't talk about Superman and Lois right now. <laughs> I was about to keep going. Oh, the oh, ferrets. the ferrets. Yeah, earlier that was the story they covered instead of Harley's <laughs> bank heist. Oh, uh, poor Harley. Dude, I want to live in Ivy's apartment. Yeah, me too. It looks glorious. The vibe's immaculate. immaculate. Jinx. jinx. Double jinx. jinx. Bitch. <laughs> Oh, poor Harley sulking, and of course Ivy making her feel better. The good friend she is. She's J K H. Just keep heisting. <laughs> so I goes They're like, making JK her clean. Is already a thing. You can't just add another letter and expect us to know what it is. <laughs> it's the way Ivy's making them clean now. Rightfully so. You know they're basically living there. Yeah. They have to true. clean up with the way they treat the place. <laughs> and obviously the introduction of King Shark was fucking fantastic. Yep. He's one of the best characters. I love show. him. He's such a cool guy. I want to be friends with him. Voiced by Ron Funches, who is just outstanding. I love him so much. He was in a just some a great show called Undateable. Sadly, uh, stars a piece of shit. But Ron Funches is in it, and he's outstanding. He's just a happy ray of sunshine in this. Oh, I love him. And he's then he to, can be he's aggressive City and in murderous. Really? Yes, he is. Ooh. Might have to. Uh, he's also one of like two comedians with an exclusive shoe. He's got a Puma brand shoe. Oh, I was punches. like, did he say shoe or shoe? And you said shoe. Okay, okay. Yeah, he's got a Puma. Cool. The way they're getting evicted right now, that's very cool. You know, because King Shark is a pet. Yeah. And I love that King Shark's like that's fucking offensive. <laughs> He's like I'm a I'm a I'm a living being. Yeah, just exactly. like you. I'm sentient. <laughs> I don't depend Aww. on anyone. Father and son. I love that he made the little Well, Alfred well, Alfred did. made it. <laughs> Grilled cheese sandwich with an R on it. I think it's funny how big of a fucking dork Batman is. 
Batman's just like to me, a, not a to regular only... dude, to be honest, who has very bad trauma. <laughs> it's funny though that, like, I get like the bat suit, you know, like to an extent. But, but then to theme the entire bat cave. <laughs> Oh my god! Like the chair. Look at the chair. It's yeah, got, it's got bat ears. That's, That's embarrassing so if you think about it. It's funny that he's just a he's just a big fucking nerd. You yeah, know? just a grown. He's probably like what thirty two. Got a man cave with bat theme. <laughs> <laughs> Both parents dead. <laughs> just a rich white dude helping people and killing bad guys. I thought that last scene was also super funny with a uh, Robin going. That that whole conversation, the nemesis conversation, being stereotypically a sex conversation, where he's like, you know, you want to find your nemesis, and I didn't have my first nemesis until my late twenties, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to find the right person and stuff like that. And then the conversation ends with Robin going, "So when can I start having sex?" <laughs> and Batman's like, "Whoa, I gotta go. I'm out of here." Oh, All right, shit. let's talk about our. Movies and shows we've been watching. Movies and shows. So let me uh, let's just go one by one. You know, I'll uh, I'll I'll, I'll go down the list. Wait, hold on. I I don't think I gave that end of the TV show a good enough. I loved that episode. Finding Mr. Right. Ten out of ten. Um, absolutely great episode. All right, now we can move on. Oh, it I is. Had a to fun, give it, it an ending. It was actually. It's actually one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, of the whole yeah. Series, and the, I, just, I had like, to give it a good ending. I love. I loved when I discovered the series, and the episodes just kept getting better and better. And the way oh, yeah. they, they introduce characters, never a bad one. The way that they pace the introduction of the crew, you know, like they didn't immediately give you King Shark with all the others. Like he was until episode and then four, and then you, they you give just us keep... bits of sexual tension with Ivy and yeah, Harley, just, and it's like, just... are they? Will they? I don't know. They I could just know. be friends. It's a lot it's of fun. So good. <laughs> I'm ready to talk episode five. Yes, next week. But for now, let's talk what we've seen, what we've watched let's do it, lately, let's do it, let's do it. 2021. Yep. Starting, Malcolm and Marie. Who that was a movie or what? Do you, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Short film, I mean, it was it was long, it was like I think it was a movie, like it was full full movie length, and it was like, just them in a room talking. No, them in a room arguing, fighting. yeah, fighting. arguing and fighting. It was exhausting to watch. Yeah, it was a lot. Uh, uh, starring John David Washington and Zendaya. Zendaya. It was and just holy cow. It's a lot. And uh, can you imagine filming that? I was probably and, I was probably really emotionally draining. Like a two hour argument? Oh my goodness. It was just it was it was very, very, very strenuous. Like, bro, that was a hard one to go get. Go watch that me. if you if you're feeling toxic. If you're feeling toxic, go watch it. <laughs> bro, I will never watch that movie again. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like uh, not yeah. not not a movie I even necessarily recommend. It wasn't bad, but it was like it's just not an entirely enjoyable watch. Yeah, it can be emotionally hard to watch sometimes. I, I mean, and don't get me wrong. Critically, I think it was swell. Yes, it was a good movie. Done very well. Written very well. And uh, beautiful to look at. The Which noir, is exactly black and why white. I it's making it. us not want to watch it again. Uh, it's just, it's just, and it's not exactly why I don't want to watch it again. It's just that, like, I guess that uh, the artistic choices are what make it difficult to rewatch, you know? So exactly what I said. <laughs> you just love to disagree with me. Yeah, I guess I do. Go ahead, <laughs> but <laughs> next movie, Judas um, and the Black Messiah. Oh yeah, we went and saw that in That was our first theater. that was our first movie back in yeah. theaters, which we, ha- was, we decided we'd have to go see that in theaters. That was a fun that was cuz we we had it on HBO Max. We could have watched it for free there. But it was one that we were like, if if we weren't, this has to be done right. This has to be done right. We have to give our full attention to this, mm-hmm. you know. And fuck, blew us away. Oh my god! And obviously, the story of Fred Hampton is one that is devastating. And his performance, Ooh. Daniel Kaluuya as uh, oh my as Fred god. Hampton was just fucking phenomenal. I am a revolutionary. <sighs> that shit was fucking outstanding and i mean 
you you were your face was just wet at the end of the movie you bro, were just sobbing. I, was sobbing I was sobbing bro i mean and you know it's gonna end bad and i think it is fucking because you well you don't wild. know the story because it's not taught in schools but if, uh, if I, you, I mean if you've known the story because you researched it then you know how it ends mm-hmm. and, and it sucks so bad it's crazy that like we know the cia killed fred hampton <laughs> like we know that for a fact and we're just like oh, but the cia is still there fuck the government <laughs> bro. bro it doesn't make any f- it's 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 racist it's it's bl- blatantly and absolutely racist but next movie tom and jerry well, <laughs> <laughs> i also wanted to comment on uh lakeith stanfield's performance in Judas oh my gosh yes, yes because I his performance was outstanding his portrayal of the informant he was, was the just... reason i wanted to go see it i love lakeith oh, I stanfield because of my favorite LaKeith. movie but it was so yeah because of someone great someone great yes, he's in that course. but uh Dude, his portrayal of this dude who is just being tortured emotionally because... So stressed out. And then when you see him at the end of the movie... At a certain point, he was won over. Like, he believed in what the Black Panther Party believed, but he was still getting paid, you know? And he was... Like, the money was too good to turn down. And it was killing him. Like, but you feel sorry for him, too. Even though you know you shouldn't. It's... It's... Well, I mean... He was also a victim. Like the, it's it's not like he was a villain, you know. He was an informant, but he was a victim to the system. Yeah, he was being threatened with jail of course. time. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's not fair. It's, it's not, just fair. not fair. It's just not fair. That's exactly right. It's just not fair. But Judas and the Black Messiah on HBO Max, a fucking phenomenal movie. Watch just it a if you haven't movie. already. Oh yeah, and Malcolm and Marie is on Netflix. Yeah, that was a Netflix mm-hmm. original. But uh, other, another HBO Max, one that we watched when it came out. Just on a whim. Another 2021 film, Tom and Jerry. Yeah, uh, really good. A reason a reason I wanted to watch it is because when I was little, Tom and Jerry was my favorite. Like, it was very well done. No, the storyline was uh, great. I mean, I couldn't tell you shit about the storyline now. Well, but yeah, we were. Oh, you mean we the were movie? Baked. I was talking about the cartoon from when I was little. Oh, I was talking about the movie. Yeah, my bad. You're good. No, the the storyline and and this Tom and Jerry was pretty fun. You know them trying to take over a hotel a little bit, trying to Glad find a place remember. to stay. <laughs> uh, I loved uh, Michael Pena in that movie. He's an absolute treasure. I love him. He's outstanding. Uh, I love Tom and Jerry personally. I mean Tom and Jerry <laughs> rock too. <laughs> the animated characters are so good. They did them like. Really oh, great. They, I wasn't creeped out by them at all. At all. Like uh, the They're blending them into the real world was interesting, and I yeah. liked it a lot. It makes you wonder, like, how did they do this? It's really well done. Yeah, it was very, very cool. But uh, Tom and Jerry, just a couple of classic characters, and very fun, fun movie to watch. All right, and we've already talked about this next one on a previous on our first podcast together. Yeah, the best of Pixar and Disney animation, mm-hmm. which was, I believe, episode 83. I might be off, but I believe it was episode 83. But yeah, if you want to pay 30 bucks again uh, to see it on Disney, plus Raya and the Last Dragon. It might be off by now. I have you no don't think idea. So? I, don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, know. Raya is a wonderfully sensual movie to watch. Not sensual. <laughs> Please cut that part out. <laughs> I meant something that's good to look at. You're going to cut that part out, right? No. Nah, Colton. That's Stan. No, I'll cut it. I'll cut it. No, but I get it. It was a, a it was fulfilling, you know, like you you enjoyed looking at it. It's 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 a very pretty I film. I love it. It's a the very rain pretty in film. that where the sparkly rain. Oh Ooh, my goodness. It looks like glitter. I sometimes just go back and watch just that part. It's the best part. But yeah, so go back and listen to the best of Disney and Pixar animation if you want to hear our thoughts on Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah. Next up, Apple TV original. With Carrie. Tom Holland and, and Sierra Bravo. Sierra Bravo. She uh 
phenomenal in this movie. And Cherry. Oh my gosh, this movie was not what I expected. Bro, I, uh, <laughs> I, it didn't get a lot of great reviews and a lot of people what? weren't huge fans. What? Right. I thought it was great. I thought it was, fun- I sobbed like a baby. Bro, it was so we good. We sobbed like babies at the end of that. Not just at the end, bro. Whenever he but was. But multiple times. Whenever he was, uh, you know, he's at the, he's in the army. And he's on the phone with... Oh, my gosh. With his uh, wife? Yeah, I I think at the time they would have been married. They're married now, yeah. Yeah, but, bro, whenever he just, like, breaks down after getting off the phone... She's like, I love you, and she's like, say it back, and then he just hangs up. He's, like, just so fucking stressed out. God. It's heartbreaking. I I don't think I could watch that movie again. (laughs) Oh, it was rough, but... I think Tom Holland's performance was phenomenal. Sierra Bravo's performance, also phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, seeing her grow from the uh, little sister of Kendall Knight. Yeah, we just finished Big, Big Time, Time Rush, Rush too. Uh, oh, my gosh. We watched a lot of shit. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's a great movie. And I think it perfectly captures this journey of, you know, the, the way we treat our veterans in general. Oh, yeah. Like fucking shit. It's it's, and it was a it was a a look at the military you don't get in a lot of movies. You know, it wasn't in any way positive. Like there was nothing good about the military in this movie. You know, oh, not at all. It's it's not it's good the, it's, propaganda. It is the villain. It's the villain in yeah, this movie. I, you know, and I like that. It's it needs to be said and at some point. You know, I'm not I'm not for patriotism. I'm not like. God bless America or anything, but treating our veterans really good shouldn't be hard at all. There should not be homeless veterans. Exactly. It's it's easy to do nice shit. Easy. And it never gets done ever. And that movie shines a light on that. It really does. And uh, and Tom how Holland traumatizing that the military can be on people mm-hmm. alone. While war can be traumatizing, the way we treat people in the military already. Yeah, exactly. Double trauma. Just horrible. Terrible. terrible. But Tom Holland killed the performance. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Uh, And honestly, it would be a movie I'd like to watch again at some point. It's uh, heavy, but... I really, really enjoyed watching it. You yeah. know, like it, it's a the rare, it's, is and that's rare for me. Like a movie that like genuinely makes me go, fuck you. Mm-hmm. you know, it's like real was, life stuff. I was really crying, but fuck, it was so good. Like, and it was, it was so visually pleasing. It was a beautiful movie to mm-hmm. look at. It was just, it was just way too good. Yeah. I loved it. Um, Next up, we got Moxie. Done by Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler. So uh, good, a little uh, feminism movie. Yeah, and it was it was very cute. It was mm-hmm. just it's just a it's just a cute movie. Yeah, about a mom and her daughter, um, and and her formation of this revolutionary yeah rebellion mm-hmm. against the system and I Moxie. Was, I was getting there. I also needed help remembering. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie, and uh, another one that I would definitely go back and watch. This was on Netflix, also. Yes. Uh, it's it's very satisfying, you know. It's it it warms your heart. By yeah, the end happy of it. ending stuff, you know. Yeah. And it's she changes the world. It's a lot of good commentary, you know. And at first. We didn't watch a preview or anything. Oh, my we gosh. Were, we we got very, slapped in the face. We were very nervous. Because we were watching at first. We were like, oh, it's just going to be because the main character is a white girl. We were like, it's just another basic Netflix movie with a white girl as the main character. And she's going to have a white boyfriend. And there's going to be no diversity. And then we get this feminist movie <laughs> with a woman revolution. <laughs> and we literally were blown away. We were like. Oh, okay. okay, Amy Poehler. I was like, and I was like, I don't know why I doubted it. You know, like Amy Poehler's good. Yeah, we were like, wait, why did we even doubt it? Like, we're kind of dumb. A little bit. Yeah. We're a little dumb. Just a little bit. But next up, uh, pretty much the opposite of Moxie. Very, very long. Oh, not uh, movie. 
No, we're going to skip over that. Zack Snyder's Justice League is actually next on the list, but we d- we also discussed that on a podcast <laughs> okay. back on episode 79. So if you want to go listen to us talk about Zack Snyder's Justice-, Justice League, we have a whole hour and a half podcast on it, episode 79. Another DC so. thing. Another DC thing. Phenomenal. But Bad Trip. With Seth Rogen. Wrong. With Eric Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Colton, I'm serious. You better cut that part out. I will. Okay. But Eric Andre. <laughs> this show was, uh, this movie was just so perfectly executed. It's literally the funniest movie I've ever seen. And the fact that they put Eric Andre and uh, Hannibal Burris in actual, or er, no, Lil Rel Howery. That's who it was. Uh, and like actual danger yeah. at some point. And the fact they pulled it off. It, it, they it's almost a, got, they got a knife pulled on mm-hmm. them. Like actually. It's a movie full of pranks done on real people, but there's a storyline. That that they lace through the whole thing. It's fucking insane. It's, it's like jackass, but if there was a storyline. And it's so funny. It's so he funny. He gets no. butt naked at one, one of point. the funniest movies I've ever I've ever seen. Uh, one of the more grotesque and uh, raunchy and nasty funny movie movies I've ever seen. You feel me? Yeah. Just, just very raw, <laughs> very unfiltered, unhinged. Just like Eric this Andre's got okayed. comedy. Yeah, Eric Andre's comedy. That's just what it is, and that's another Netflix one. But. Go watch it. Oh, dude, I can't recommend it enough. Probably the best. <laughs> probably the, for me, the funniest movie of this year. For sure. It's It deserves an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> best actor, Eric Andre. <laughs> best screenplay, Bad Trip. But uh, next, we got another HBO Max one. Godzilla vs. Kong. Very good. Yo, this was just, it's, I mean, the story was... Good enough, you know, like it was, I was concerned about how good it would be and it, it got, be, it, it got by, you know. And I love that they're going to start making movies with more monster, less, he, less people. Yeah. You know, just, just, because give us, just, just do give, it. Just We're ready. The, just give the people We're all ready. the monsters fighting. We're done. It's like. Stop fucking around. I don't like the complaints. Like I want a story like, bro, then don't watch Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. That is verse. Big monkey versus big dinosaur. We're here to watch. You want human dialogue, bro? We're here to watch these dinosaurs fuck on each other. They're, they're, they are going to fight. What do you want to watch, bro? And I'm I, I I really just want like I want like a I want a big crossover universe. I want MonsterVerse with Godzilla versus Kong. We got Pacific Rim, Transformers, just all this shit. Just Power all of Rangers? them fighting. Maybe even Power Rangers. You know, <laughs> fuck it. Let's just let's just get one big thing. Marvel, Star Wars. This is getting too big now. Okay, yeah, you're right. Teenage Mutant Thanos. Ninja Turtles, though. Um, no, no. Because if <laughs> no, we do can't. that, then we have to do Marvel. Is that a law? <laughs> is that a law? Yeah. But Godzilla vs Kong, very fun movie to watch. Uh, Kong Kong is the shit. You feel a lot of empathy for him. Uh, Godzilla uh, has his reasons. He's a bitch boy. But he has his reasons. He's a bitch boy. No, I, I think I think it was warranted. The military uh, was coming after that ass. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Fuck the U.S. military. You're right. <laughs> As we learned from Cherry. Uh-huh. And then let's go on to the next one. Another Netflix original. Another superhero movie. Thunder Force. Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer. Uh, it, Nailed one, it. We got Jason she Bateman. nailed it. Got Jason Bateman with the fucking lobster claws. I love it so much. Bro, I want to watch that again. We should watch it again. Uh, but it's so, so fucking unexpectedly funny. funny, dude. I knew it was going to be goofy, but I didn't expect to actually in, like like the movie. I didn't expect to see Jason Bateman, Bateman with real fucking lobster claws. They ran with it. They ran with that. They really did. They went after. They it were like that. real. Jason Bateman was like, "What?" And they were like, "Real. They're going to be real." <laughs> and he was like, "We're surgically removing your arms and implanting like, giant lobster claws." He's like, "Oh, okay, cool." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Thunder Force also caught shit. But you got to know what you're getting into, you know. Yeah, fuck movie critics; they don't know anything. 
<laughs> uh, next, another HBO Max. We got Mortal Kombat. Gruesome. Bro. Gory. Fucking gory. But good. Yo, fun to watch. Gruesome, gory, good. And it's like another movie that is going to catch shit just because of like what it is. But like it's, but it's a really good storyline in my I opinion. I thought it was good. I you watched know? it. I, you know? Yeah, like the fact that you watched it and, and enjoyed it proved to me that it was relatively good because that, sh- that probably could have been very not entertaining. You yeah. Know? Which but, I was I was watching. I was like trying to be very supportive. I was like, "Yeah, come on, Mortal Kombat," and then I ended up really enjoying it. I was <laughs> like, "Yeah, I really want to watch it." But yeah, you know, it was uh, it's Mortal Kombat, and if you've played the video game, you know that shit is intense. I've played it once, and I played I lost. it a lot when I was younger, and I, so I was definitely gonna watch that movie. Yeah, and I remember telling my dad I played it, and then I got in trouble. So he was like, "Mortal." Round Combat. Two. Fight. <laughs> yeah. Good game. Next up, Netflix original. Mitchell versus the machines. Yeah, the Mitchells versus the machines. It's fucking good. It's so good. Yo, it I mean, needs more hype to be honest. We got uh Phil Phil Lord, Chris Miller, or yeah, I got that right. Just the guys who made the Lego movie. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, 21 Jump Street. Like, these guys have just made some fucking bangers, and then they've also got... They just now, keep popping the out. The Mitchells versus Classics. the Machines. And, bro, I loved this movie. It's, it's... It's just nerd fest. It is. We got a family taking their daughter to college, and then there's a fucking ro- robot invasion. Just a whole bunch what? of... What? Artificial intelligence. I love this storyline. It's so refreshing. Oh, and it was so cute. They always be putting out refreshing shit like that into the Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. I drank that shit up. And you know, it is Mother's Day as we record, and the mom in this movie at the end and throughout the movie, complete <laughs> badass. Oh yeah, voiced by Maya Rudolph, just an absolute queen. Yep, they be they had the feminism. That the daughter is a lesbian, but they don't, they don't they like don't, make it cringy. Yeah, you they know with how Disney be doing that. They also don't, they just don't make it the point of her character. Like yeah. they don't make that like <laughs> people who people who are gay are more than just gay. Exactly, you know? like, it's <laughs> not their personality. So I love that they just kind of like. It was a back. It wasn't even a background thing. It was just a thing. Yeah, it was just a thing. Hey, are you taking her to the prom, Mom? We've only been together a few weeks. It wasn't like a weird thing. Yeah, it was normal, and yeah. I liked it. I liked that a lot too, and it was just cute. It's another one of those ones that's going to leave you extremely satisfied. Another way- one that I want to keep watching over and over. Again. And if you have watched the Lego Movie and you have watched Spider Man into the Spider Verse. You this, will like this. It, it, you will it's because given. it's exactly what Phil Lord and Chris Miller do. They, Good ass storyline. They great really, animation. they really, really make you feel like these main characters are threatened, like shit is going to go bad for them, and they overcome, and it mm-hmm. gives you hope, and it makes you all happy and stuff. Yep. It's classic, classic and then you Star want Wars shit. <laughs> and then you want a sequel. <laughs> I hope they don't have to fight another robot invasion. Yeah, though. that'd be, that'd be fun, but weird. I'd be like, I'd how be did, like how did another two of these one. Happen? Yeah, and another one with Eric Andre as a voice. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've been getting our fill of Eric Andre lately. Exactly. Uh, but, yeah, those are all the movies from 2021 that we have recently uh, given viewings, and not so recently sometimes. This is going all the way back to January with, I think, Malcolm and Marie was January, and then Judas and the Black Messiah, Tom and Jerry were February, Raya and Cherry were March. Moxie yeah. might have been March. Zack Snyder. This is pretty much bad trip. Oh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, Bad Trip, Godzilla vs. Kong, Thunder Force, and Mortal Kombat. I think were all April movies, and we watched all of those. Hoochin. No wait, Zack Snyder's Justice League would have been March. Yes. And WandaVision would have been. Oh, now we got the March. TV shows. I wasn't even thinking about that. And so we've also got WandaVision and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. If you want to go hear me talk about that with some buddies. We got There's so much se- fun. Dude, so much fun. We got episode 71 through 77, and then the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We got episode 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, and 90. Nice. On our, but let me hear. Go watch them. You have not 
discussed on the podcast how you felt about WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier, so I want to hear that. Um, okay. WandaVision made me fall in love with Miss Elizabeth Olsen because I loved watching the Olsen sisters when I was a child with my sister. Oh, I yeah. watched them like religiously and then now I'm grown up and I get to see the other Olsen sister as a superhero. So I'm just like, my mind is already blown away. Yeah. And I wasn't even that big of a Marvel fan. Like I hadn't seen that, that much mar that many Marvel movies. So I was like confused the entire time. I was like, what the fuck is happening, Colton? And he <laughs> kind of have had to explain everything, but still ended up being one of my favorites. It's a, it's, and it's still one of my favorites. And honestly, to me, stands as, top three of the things marvel has ever put out you like, can just tell that every single person who worked on that show is so passionate of it passionate wanda. about that show wanda. especially wanda and vision bro i love paul bettany and elizabeth olsen they're just a perfect pair and the introduction of monica rambeau kick ass the way she's going to be in the marvels with captain marvel they, and marvel, marvel always does such a good job at doing separate stories and oh, we one, got a whole origin story within wandavision it's phenomenal and the introduction of white vision the scarlet witch uh photon monica rambeau uh we got more jimmy woo which could result in another series like it's just like uh, so much it's all packed i never realized how big Marvel is until like I hear like Endgame is the biggest movie of the year and then I'm like oh my gosh it's just a superhero movie the highest grossing movie of all time crazy it's crazy but I mean I think Avatar reclaimed that spot because of a re-release into the theaters but nevertheless freaking Avatar WandaVision and the Falcon and Winter Soldier both fucking great classic Marvel uh, WandaVision, not so much classic Marvel, but still fucking great. Yeah, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, classic Marvel, and fucking amazing. Oh, outstanding. Uh, but let's go to the HBO Max original that we've given, that the only HBO Max original we've given a, we've given a shot this year. Yeah. Uh, With our favorite Miss Queenie Pop. Ooh, Kristen Milioti's Made we for Love. We love her. Made for Love is her fantastic. Show. She embodied it. That's her show. Oh, yeah. She she is the show. You know, without her, I think it kind of loses its joie de vivre. A little bit of Byron, just because he's so... Oh, he he is the perfect Hable. villain here. Yeah, like, he, he perfectly plays this role of, wow, you are damaged and... He's a piece of shit. Bro, you do not know how to handle things. You don't even... He like, can't handle the real world. He lives in a little bubble. Exactly, and that's like that's the that's the the basis of the entire story is him marrying, you know, Kristen Milioti's character and holding her in that bubble for ten years. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to give away too much because I really want people to watch it. But like, oh, absolutely, that's all. Can that's you all imagine being say. held in a bubble like that? It's dealing. It's dealing with a uh, you know, and I also want to divulge that the the made for love idea is a chip that you implant into you know a, a, a your significant other's brain yeah or both of your brains theoretically and you merge and you can hear well all their theoretically thoughts. but only it ended up you just said you don't want to spoil anything that's right <sighs> <laughs> but made for love phenomenal just a great tv show would rewatch. 100%. And let's let's stick with HBO Max here, uh, but also more specifically the CW with the DC Universe, Superman and Lois. And oh my gosh, phenomenally done. I was not expecting it. I Okay, so I've, I've watched Arrow and I've watched Flash. And I've I have watched, I've watched Supergirl and I've watched Legends of Tomorrow. Like, I've watched all these CW shows, right? And to be honest, these first five episodes of Superman and Lois, I, like, it's different. Like, it's not, it's, they... They've done something different with the way they've made the show. I've and I don't watched know what it is. like a few minutes of the Flash with my sister a couple of times, and it just I couldn't get interested in it. But Superman and Lois, like, well, the Superman Superman and Lois is more grounded, you know, which is which is so difficult to do with a character like Superman. And the best way to do that is to put a family around him. His main storyline, I I really like it because they gave Lois a super a. 
It is. It's what, every bit line. as much. It's every bit as much Lois's show as it is Superman's. It's in the title. I love know, it. Superman and Lois, and the fact that the entire show is about their family. It's not so much about a nemesis they're going to have to fight. And obviously, there is that looming threat in Captain Luther. But it's about how Superman lives his life with family. With family. How, how does he balance this life? And know? it also shows us the life of his family members. Yeah, and uh, what could come of their children. Yep. You know, becoming powerful, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it can be corny because these CW shows have that, have that tendency. But they're always going to bring it back to, like, the human connection and talking it out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what CW does. Yeah, Lois always brings them back down to earth. Exactly. <laughs> it's always... And she is just perfect yeah at first we didn't we didn't uh give her the respect at first you know we were like we were a bit hesitant we were like oh well, you were we don't know okay it was me it was probably some deep rooted misogyny i gotta be honest <laughs> but i didn't like her at first i was like oh uh, you thought well you did think that she looked too old for superman <laughs> she looked a little too old i was like why does he get to look 30 and she looks like 50 <laughs> but She's a beautiful woman. She is. She's a beautiful woman. I just woman. didn't appreciate her at first, and it's shallow of me. But I also want to talk about Tyler Hecklin's character, Clark Kent, Superman, because so he you is can't my- recognize without glasses, by the way. <laughs> He's my favorite rendition of Superman. Yeah? Because he brings back this classic just here to help, you know? Like, he doesn't- He's not too dark like Henry Cavill's Superman True. and Man of Steel right. and the Justice League and stuff. He's just, he's generally, and he's always trying his best to be happy about things. You yeah. Know? He tries to be a light, and I appreciate that about him. Or I don't think if, Lo if Lois weren't there, oh, that yeah. family would fall apart. Oh, 100%. <laughs> it's he, embarrassing. Uh, obviously, parenthood is easy for no one. Yeah, but... It's got to be even harder for Superman, you know? Yeah, because it's like, save the world and be but dad. Also, you know, be there for my family. Or else you suck. Like, Lois is dead. Yep. U.S. military. Huh. Huh. Seems to be a theme throughout the uh, the uh, selections of shows we've watched that include the U.S. military. <laughs> and mm. them sucking. <laughs> <laughs> but like that in the real world too though i guess oh. i suppose but we've Left. got so much we got so much superhero shows here we got wandavision we got falcon and the winter soldier we've got <laughs> superman and lois but we're gonna top it all off with, with amazon prime amazon prime's invincible oh, oh my god fuck no bro. you guys you wouldn't this is that shit right there this i shit. want this in my veins bro like this is <laughs> this is the show this will fulfill all, like what Marvel won't give you, you know? Yeah, like they're never going to take it to this level. And if you if you've watched The Boys on Amazon Prime, you're thinking more in that realm, you know? It's, it's, it's insane. It's gory. The plot it's, twist. It's more watch many, you know. And if you've read the comic book, I've I, I haven't, but it's I've read that it maintains a very very loyal portrayal to the comics, you know? Like it's like pretty much frame for frame. Which is pretty awesome. In it's the grand too scene. good. You have to go watch it. Yo, and another wait, one that another thing that we've seen on Amazon Prime. Wait, are we not done talking about this? Keep talking about it. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm it, uh, what were you gonna say? I'm... The SpongeBob docu series. <laughs> oh, fuck the docu pants. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, about that. it's like a it's SpongeBob, but it's done as a documentary. A documentary. So it'll be like people, and it's like people who like SpongeBob, like they witnessed. The events of Spongebob yeah, in real life. People who, like, witnessed. They were like, oh boy, when he sang the Goofy Gooper song, <laughs> that changed the world. Yeah. He changed the world that day. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. It's amazing. I want to jump back to Invincible, yeah, though, Yeah, real go quick, ahead. Because, fuck, just uh, the voice acting in this, phenomenal. The animation, phenomenal. The action, phenomenal. It's straight uh, up just fun to watch. You got, you got fucking J.K. Simmons... As Omni Man, who is just fantastic. I mean, the voice actor, the, crazy, uh, but... the 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 Omni Man's fucking horrifying. That guy's <laughs> yeah. that guy's a, a piece. You'll find that out in the first episode. But, but... you know, Stephen Yoon as uh, as Invincible, 
as Mark, just outstanding. I love him, uh, and I love that character. How he's he his he's literally his invincible. whole thing is literally getting up every time he gets knocked down. You know, because he's, he's invincible. invincible. Uh, when you don't, it's like how is he going to get up after that? Yeah, he gets his ass bro beat to death. Like he should die. Like literally should have died at least seven times. Every episode, it's like, who's he going to get his ass beat? Yeah. His, who's he going to get his but ass beat? But he always gets suit? back up. He always gets back up. But we've also got some phenomenal voice talent from Sandra O. Oh. oh, yeah. Which we've been Which led back us into to Grey's, Grey's Anatomy. Anatomy. We've been watching <laughs> Grey's Anatomy again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, but uh, Sandra O, oh, phenomenal. We got Zazie Beats uh, as another voice in it. And it's just, it's just a fantastic cast and. A, a great superhero story like yeah very few uh series or movies have done as effectively as this did in terms of a complete and satisfying storyline very and satisfying already confirmed for seasons two and so three. excited for that which just absolutely outstanding so yeah you got anything else you want to talk about? I do not. I have talked my heart out and we got ourselves an hour-long podcast here look Whew. at that Stuttered my way through it, said a lot of things you're going to have to cut and edit, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Here we are. Here we are. Made it out the other An side. An hour later. I love it. Love you. I love you. This was Aww. the Penny Bloom Podcast. <laughs> it was the 92nd episode. 92nd. Uh, if you are still here, I have one request. One. Uh, go rate and review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, it's the only way we grow the show, uh, besides you sharing with your friends. Uh, you know, we we just want to entertain more people, you know. Uh, we are also currently discussing The Bad Batch on our weekly show, The Bad Batch Bitches, uh, which will be coming tomorrow. The second episode will be. I'm very excited about that. Follow us on Twitter, at Penny Bloom Pod, on Instagram, at Penny Bloom Podcast. I was Colton Robertson. That was... Emily Thompson. And remember... Remember. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise... Praise... Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves.